When this piece of lightweight aluminum is cut and tooled, it will become the frame of a personal flying machine. Strap on the Parajet, take off from just about anywhere, and soar to an altitude of three kilometers. Used by military operatives, drug enforcement agents, and first responders, it gets you in and out fast, whether you're carrying a camera or a gun. Since implementing the Parajet, flying cops of Florida's Palm Bay Police Department are now able to spot stolen vehicles and locate marijuana grow fields from the sky. The Parajet breaks down into the engine, the wing, and the airframe. The first step in making the airframe is to machine the base plate. It's made from super strong aircraft grade aluminum. This is the heart of the airframe that will hold the engine and gas tank on one side and the harness on the other. As the computer controlled cutting machine carves out the base plate's holes and contours, it is soaked with a coolant that lubricates the tool and keeps it from overheating. Holes are machined out of the aluminum to make the airframe even more lightweight. The same process is applied to all other parts of the airframe, including the pivot arms. The pivot arms are what connect the base plate and the flyer to the wing. They control direction either by hand or by shifting weight in the harness, leaving the pilot's hands free to hold a weapon, a medical kit, or a camera. The Parajet is designed to snap together quickly in the field without tools. So every part is machined and measured down to the fraction of a millimeter. This fit has to be perfect to withstand wind and engine vibration. It can't come apart at three kilometers in the air. Once the metal pieces have been cleaned and measured, they're shipped off-site to be treated for strength and weatherproofing. The freshly treated parts are returned to the shop floor and assembly of the airframe can begin. First, six spars are clipped to the base plate to form the framework. Curved aluminum completes the cage, which protects the pilot from the propeller blades. A fuel tank is hung on the base plate, which will last for three hours of flying. Netting forms a barrier between the flyer's arms and the blades. Finally, the 27 horsepower engine is mounted to the base plate. If the wind is right, the Parajet can carry a flyer at top speeds of 65 kilometers an hour. Next, it's time to connect the harness. The harness attaches the Parajet to the pilot. It gets snapped onto the base plate and bolted to the pivot arms. The propeller is made of two lightweight carbon fiber blades. They're fitted together and bolted to the engine. Before the Parajet can take to the air, it has to go through a hang test. This is to ensure it can hold the weight of a pilot. The Parajet is strapped on and clipped to a parallel bar. The suspended tester shifts and stresses the harness to make sure everything is holding tight and secure. The engine is revved to the red line, around 7,500 RPMs, to make sure the engine is putting out enough power without shaking loose the frame. Having passed the factory trials with flying colors, the Parajet is ready for a sky test. The device breaks down into mission-ready components. In the field, it's reassembled in five to 10 minutes. The flyer pulls the starter to get the motor running. Using Kevlar core lines, the flyer connects his harness to the Parajet's wing. It's made of the same ripstop polyester fabric that parachutes are made of. The flyer runs against the wind and takes a flying leap. The test pilot puts the Parajet through demanding maneuvers, banking and diving, and turning the craft by pulling the hand toggles to steer. It is capable of precision flying, multi-range destinations, and can carry up to 280 kilos of pilot and payload. So whether the mission is bringing back intel, 
getting a bead on contraband, or locating a victim in harsh terrain, the Parajet turns the well-trained pilot into a spy in the sky. And once you see the Parajet suspended in the clouds, you will believe a man can fly. Mm -hmm.